Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of the Hardly Millennial Podcast, where we are young, dumb, and full of opinions. Uh, you guys know. You all know that. You all know that. Hopefully you've learned by now. If not, well, go back and listen to the last 23 episodes, and you'll learn. <laughs> you'll see a trend. You'll see a trend. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, today, I have me here again, Adam, and I... Joining me as always, with the exception of yesterday, is Matthew. Hey guys, and uh, we have uh, some. We have a nice little topic here today, and today we are going to be talking about survival. <gasps> dun 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 dun. Just a lot of different things about it. How would you survive? Could a millennial survive? Oh, uh, could you survive? Uh, there's there's actually a lot that goes into this topic that I thought there would be. Yeah, it's a pretty deep one, man. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's my personal brainchild. Uh, you're welcome. If you it's guys true. hate it, sorry. <laughs> um, I was sitting there this morning doing my morning contemplation, mm-hmm. and uh, I just realized that, oh my goodness, I'm not quite sure we're as sturdy as we used to be as people. No. I don't know. I, I don't know if we would survive the same way we used to be able to. We're, we're definitely not as equipped emotionally or physically most of us i think <laughs> to survive such situations of uh, well the funny thing about survival is uh-huh. there's so many different situations you can find yourself in yeah and no matter what situation you're in ever you got to survive it right right that's goal number 1 mm-hmm. so you know the, the first thing i thought of before you can even begin to think of what would i do or you got to put yourself in a situation, right? Right. So, what? What's Adam's worst case? Where Where do you find yourself needing to survive? That you're like, oh fuck, this place. Okay, so are we talking about just pulling from personal experience, or what's the most difficult place to survive in? The most for <laughs> for you, because I'd imagine it's different for everyone. So, I would think that trying to survive in like dry wasteland like extreme hot temperatures like all plant life has died most animal life has died like the desert adam like the de- but like the extreme desert we already live there adam but we I'm, do that every day i'm talking like a post apocalyptic like desert though like, like no giant air conditioning? He- like no air conditioning, most plant life is dead because of it. Like oh, you're all talking the like, waters, like like sand dune desert. Yeah, like North Africa kind of desert. Yeah, that, something that Sahara? like that. Yeah, Sahara That's desert. Sahara. Yeah, I know my geography. <laughs> okay, but just like being in that kind of situation where there's literally no resources to pull from, even in some place like if it was an ice age, you could at least you know pull water from the ice, you know, assuming you survive the cold. But in a place where there's completely like little there's to just no resources, nothing. there's nothing. I don't know if you can survive there. Well, that's just it. You know, it would be. So, what do you have going into it? Is it just you? Do you have any equipment? Do you, are you allowed anything? You know what's strange is in my brain it always starts with a with a plane crash. Why else really? would you? Well, why else would you find yourself in some remote area needing to survive? Your plane crashed. It's, well, yeah, it's clearly the only way you <laughs> yeah, get there. I mean, yeah, I guess. Right? Yeah. With the exception of an island, which could be a boat yeah. sinking. Island bo- boat. I always I always think of just like post apocalyptic. Like somehow I just was the lucky one that survived for whatever reason. And you you wake up or you come out of you know whatever basement or some shit you're in the fucking sahara desert just and then also yeah it's like oh well th- this fucking happened while well, i was in a coma for three years or some shit i would imagine for the sake of today's topic mm-hmm. well we would just we would imagine that you have what you have right now right like your typical daily objects in your pocket so you got a pair of keys mm-hmm. probably got a cell phone right in our case we got a lighter maybe mm-hmm. a few cigarettes right you know <laughs> Which, by the way, I think a smoker jokes on everyone. So we die earlier in a normal world, uh-huh. but in a survivor world, we live a lot longer because we, we all have lighters. Oh, well, true. Yeah, so <laughs> jokes on everyone. <laughs> when the shit hits the fan, find a smoker. Oh man, C- cigarettes will be currency in like a post-apocalyptic world. Are you kidding me? So, is there currency in a post-apocalyptic world? Let's I... talk about that because if, if there's no rules. Mm-hmm. Are we really going to take the time to buy things? Or are we just going to steal them from each other? Well, I think at first that's what happens. I think 
if you're in a post-apocalyptic world and so you assume that there's pockets of everybody everywhere, right? Right. E- eventually, there's going to be some kind of community that forms. And when community forms, there's a hierarchy that forms. And when there's a hierarchy, there's usually a way to exchange of goods to have at least a somewhat peaceful community to, so that you can thrive mm. as people. So I think it's actually... I agree with you. That uh-huh. will happen, but I think it's not at first. No, 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 no. I think it's later on because yes. you have to get some kind of like local militia or something. Yeah, exactly. Something to fight off the bands of raiders that are going to mm-hmm. come. So at first, you'll be like these little villages and you're just going to get either killed or plundered. Right. You're going to have to give, um, what did they call that? Uh, a tribute. You're going to have to give <laughs> tribute to the fucking gangbangers and yeah. shit, right? So they don't kill you all. Right. And then eventually when you find enough cool people... Maybe you could find a place with a fence or something. Right. You know, maybe find a prison. Mm-hmm. Not ripping off any ideas or anything. But as far as like, <laughs> even even in those early stages, though, going back on the using like cigarettes as currency, like imagine you are in, you know, you're in that situation, right? You don't, you were a smoker, but you have no cigarettes, obviously. If you did, they're all smoked, you know, but you have uh-huh. other necessary materials. So you're, if somebody came by, it was like, Hey Matthew, I noticed you uh, have an apple there. I'll tell you what, I got I got a couple cigarettes in my backpack here. I'll give you those cigarettes for that apple. Yeah, I'll fast. <laughs> I don't need to eat that bad. I'll, exactly. I'll just fast for a day. Exactly. I'm good. I'd be collecting the fuck out of those cigarettes because I'm like, one day I'm gonna be fucking rich and I'm gonna be running shit. It's just because I sit on a throne of cigarettes. Cigarettes are a good one. I think that they're a little too addicting. So you're going to get people who are going to murder you for your cigarettes. True. I think I've actually probably talked about this on the podcast before, I think. But I think the optimum currency to have mm-hmm. in a post-apocalyptic situation is toilet paper. Yes. Let me explain real quick. Because uh-huh. your first instinct is, well, Matthew, it's so bulky, right? How, how could you possibly? It's just too – but – Although it is bulky, you're it's right. Light. It's very, very light. Yep. Okay. And you don't have to keep it in rolls. Mm-hmm. Okay. You could unroll it, put it all into boxes or whatever, mm-hmm. and you could carry it that way. Like, no one's going to care if it's on a roll when they just need to wipe their ass. True. All right. So it's super necessary. Everyone's used to having it, but no one really thinks about it until the last second. So there's going to be just shelves of this shit while everyone's going for the liquor and the cigarettes and, you know, whatever else is addicting. They're all going to get fucked up for it. No one's going to kill you over some toilet paper. Well, I feel like, though, toilet paper would be a commodity that people aren't going to really care to cherish until there's, like, some kind of community there. Mm, I beg to differ, my friend. The first time you take a shit, you are going to be looking for some toilet paper. Mm. Everyone says, oh, I could live without it. No one's ever had to. Well, the reason why I say that is because, one, we, you know, I just learned the other day from you that there are countries out there that it's customary to just use their hand to wipe, right? Oh, for sure. So I think people— But I'm talking about post-apocalyptic America. Right, right, right. But I, I, <laughs> but I think people at first would obviously have no choice but to do that, right? And then I think there's going to come a point where they just get used to doing that. And if it comes down to have you know coming across you— and, you know, while they're on whatever journey they're on and they have the option to buy, like, trade an apple for toilet paper from you, they're going to be like, oh, well, I, I can just, I'll just keep mm-hmm. the apple and I can just use yeah. my hand like I have been. Until that apple you know. turns into shit. <laughs> I think another big misnomer is, oh, well, I'll just use a leaf, right? right. Duh, stupid Matthew. Well, you're not going to find a free. leaf in my dry wasteland. Amen. <laughs> we live in the desert, folks. There are, our leaves are mesquite leaves and yes. Palo Verde leaves. They're little. You don't want to use those. You don't want to use them. They're very <laughs> thorny. Yeah, man. Toilet paper is where it's at, I'm telling you. Isn't there, uh, I think it's the game Fallout. Have you ever played any of the Fallout games? Oh, I have. I, I have tell you what I have. Okay. I enjoy them. So I haven't played them, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but in that game, don't they use, like, bottle caps Yeah, bottle as caps currency? are currency. Mm-hmm. So do you think something, like, so, like, small and just, you know, trivial nowadays like that will somehow turn into currency eventually? Maybe not bottle caps, but just something, like, along those lines. If it needed lines. to, Yeah. 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 I think that's so embedded in us that we would find a really silly means of currency like that uh-huh. instead of going to a barter kind of system. Interesting. It's just so embedded in us. Yeah. But I could see that. I don't know, it's hard because the only reason money has like value 
like the where it comes from its value it's is the we, government like right. the government the country has an economy right. that's run by the government that creates value within the country it can go up it can go down right. and that's what reflects on depending on how many pieces of currency we have printed each one holds its equal value of the pie right, right? so you print more currency it goes down in value so you, if there's no like government no centralized figure running things mm -hmm. then who's to say what what's worth what if i say bottle caps are valuable why it has to be something everyone right. wants That's like true. even back in the day it was silver and gold right because right. it's shiny and it's precious and it's rare mm -hmm. and you have to have like an operation to get it out of the ground yeah well something something like bottle caps becoming a sense of currency wouldn't even happen until there's like a sense of communities right and several of them well it happened so, with what was it tulips something like that there was a certain kind of flower that became really really valuable in oh, europe really? uh in like the medieval times or whatever uh it was like a tulip or a lily or something like that and uh -huh. the flowers the bulbs from those were worth like what would be today like two thousand dollars oh wow flower like but it was only because everybody wanted them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, I mean, it, it would be interesting because I feel like the only way, because I think we would have no choice but to just do the the bartering thing, right, at first. Yeah, for but, sure. But I've, eventually the only way that something trivial like bottle caps would become currency is not only if you have a community in a post-apocalyptic world, but several communities. And usually once you have several communities, those communities start to do trade with each other and such. And then you have to find a commodity that that's well dispersed amongst the three that just trade back and forth that you can, you know, well, just like what happens to money. I had an economics teacher once who said, you know, oh, how do like what what gives a money value? You know, and everybody was you know, kind of saying the same stuff you were. And it just came down to the end of the day. It goes at the end of the day, it's you give money value. It's a piece yeah. of paper with a face on it, mm -hmm. you know. Right, right. I, but you would have to true. have you would have to have like several communities that already existed that were like trading with each other for something like that. I think to become a sense of currency eventually. I don't know. I think that the, one of the hardest parts of surviving any of these scenarios mm -hmm. is the people. Yeah. Um, the most dangerous part of surviving <clears throat> is definitely the people. And I think your best chances is probably to get away from all the people for a while. Yes. Um, and then maybe come back after a little while, a few months or whatever, and whoever's left are kind of the strong ones who can right. maybe work with each other a little better and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but at first, dude, it, the hardest thing is going to be just getting out of the city. Oh, yeah. That's what you see in every fucking movie, and right? They're always in the beginning. They're trying to get out. The yeah, roads are packed. Get away from all the blah, people. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck the car, by the way. I would never load my car up in a situation like that. Even a natural disaster. Yeah. If there was a hurricane that was coming to the desert that was going to wipe us out. No. I'm not getting in my car, dude. No. Everyone's doing that. Yeah. You're better off just trekking down the highway. Yeah. You're much I better agree. off. Or finding some place to hide at first. Like that's probably the first thing I would do. If something like if shit hit the fan, my my first thing's not going to be get out. My first thing is going to be like find some place to hide, lay low, wait for that shit to blow over, and then get out and. So what try what survival character are you? Are you the scavenger? Are you the lay low loner scavenger? Are you the leader? Are you the warrior? I think at first I'd be like the lay low scavenger. Yeah? Yeah, like just keep my head down, collect the materials. You're very beautiful I need. for a scavenger. Usually oh, well, scavengers you. are more mediocre looking, blend in well. I'll, I could pull that off. All I have to do is just grow a beard and long hair, or just hoodie that shit, and I, nobody's going to want to fucking touch me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> like, this guy's a fucking nut. Stay away from him. <laughs> But no, I, I think at first I would do that. I, I think really it would just be about collecting anything that I feel could be valuable down the line. So just as you said with like toilet paper, it's like those would be like things that I would start, you know, be that merchant that if people came across, they could trade with and help me survive and everything until I get to a point to where maybe I can change that role. I think but a can first... opener is a really good tool too. We'll get back Ooh. to tools here in a little bit, but everyone yeah. forgets the can opener. So then you find food, and how are you going to get it? That's right? true. You end up cutting your lips and your mouth. I was going to say, you always you always see movies depicting the guy you trying to smash it with a rock, it with a rock or a knife. Just grab a can opener, guys. It fits in your pocket. Yeah. Um, on the on the discussion of which character are you, though, that's interesting. So you're the scavenger, mm -hmm. at least at first. Yeah. And then you may move into a different role once you find community. Mm -hmm. um, 
for me, there's not an immediate one that pops out. It's a process of elimination, mm -hmm. okay? So scavenger. I'm a terrible scavenger. I can't see well. I can't hear well. Both of those senses are fucked for me. Uh, if I lose my glasses, I'm literally doomed. There's no way I can do anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of lanky. I'm just awkward. It's not going to work for me very well, trying to be a scavenger. Okay. I'm going to get eaten. Um, warrior. Again, just not going to work out. I'm skinny, chicken bone, kind of lanky and awkward, don't have the greatest you know, hand-eye coordination. I'm not fighting anyone. Gotcha. It's not my thing. Uh, so I can't be that either. Okay, so that really only leaves uh, leader. Right. You know, conveniently. <laughs> <laughs> so I could talk well. Um, I'm, I'm pretty smart for the most part. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a relatable kind of guy, you know, <laughs> friendly. Right. I'm funny. You know, I'm a people person. So I'd have to, I think, what my survival would really hinge on is finding people as quickly as possible that I could work with. I was going to ask Power you about in numbers. That. Um, so whereas everybody else is, might be trying to separate themselves from the people, loners, you're, you're basically trying I'm, to collect people. I would have to collect people, yes, who are, it's it's a fine balance because they have to be strong enough to be useful, uh -huh. to be a resource, but they have to be weak enough to not just want to either take you over or go off on their own. You know, there's got to be a mutual need each other. No one can be the reacher. Right. Which is really difficult to create. It would take a lot of brain power to keep that running. Well, and see, and then me starting off as a scavenger, like you and like your little group would be things that I'd be trying to avoid exactly. for the longest time. A lot of people yeah. would. Um, simply for trust. Is, oh, yeah, You know, yeah, and yeah. I get it. So it's it's tough man you have to be strong enough to protect yourself but uh -huh. you can't look so strong that people are scared of you either right um it's a fine balance yeah. i would try to rather than fight the bandits i would definitely try to like befriend the bandit leader uh -huh. kind of deal you know i think that it's far-fetched but if i lived through it i could do it um yeah that it, it would definitely hinge on people for me Interesting. That makes sense, though. And it's but the, the and the thing with hinging on people is it's it's definitely a risk because it can go either way. Right. Sure. You could thrive as a small group or it just takes one person for you guys to take into your group. That's just like, well, fuck this Mac guy. I'm going to lead this group. Exactly. You know? Well, a perfect example is like, um, oh, who's the mayor dude in The Walking Dead? Uh, is in like oh, the first two or three seasons or whatever. I, th I think his character is the mayor. The mayor, yeah. right? That guy. The or the guy governor. Who, the, the governor, governor who yeah. ends up going, who loses an eye and stuff. Yeah. I'm kind of like that guy. <laughs> okay. Well, things that end well for him, Matthew. Yeah, but he did really good at first. That's true. He was kicking ass he and then he just went about it incorrectly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a Rick. And everyone wants to be a Rick, don't they? They don't all want to be, be a Rick. Rick. Everyone wants to be Rick. He's the hero. Uh, He's the only guy who lives. In that situation, though, I'd, I'd literally, even around all those times when they're starting to collect people and things like that, I'd still be the guy like, oh, I'm still going to I'm still be a little patient here. You be Glenn? You aren't our... Glenn, yeah, Asian dude. Glenn didn't go off on his own. Like, well, he was a scavenger. Was that his thing? I didn't watch a lot totally of The Walking Dead. Oh, so. shame on you, first of all. <laughs> uh, yeah, little Asian guy, Glenn, uh -huh. he's the scavenger. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess more like him then. But he did meet Rick right in the beginning. Right. Like, third episode, he meets mm -hmm. Rick in well, a tank. I mean, well, and that's just dead. So, whereas, Spoilers. like, he he went with people, you know, pretty right off the bat of this whole thing. I'd just probably still wait So, I guess longer. you'd be more like Daryl. You'd be more like the the... Yeah, the white trashy guy. Yeah, probably. But not Merle, not the asshole. No, He'd no, be no, the no, younger no, no, brother no. Yeah, who kind of like, like lives in the forest and does his own thing. Yeah, like the, that's the guy with the crossbow, right? Normally, that's the guy with the crossbow. Is. Yeah, he's the only badass I think still rolls. <laughs> yeah, they've pretty much taken everyone else out. So I'd probably be more like him. So maybe I'd stay with a, and I think this is kind of what his character does, like stay with a you know group, you know, at first, but then eventually it's like, oh, the shit started to hit the fan a little bit. It's like I'm gonna go off my own. I might he's, come back. He's always close by. He's always <laughs> yeah. close enough that when the zombies attack he can get there real quick right but um he's far enough away to where he's kind of a hermit yeah he it's like thing. just he's got a my distance yeah he's always mad at someone for something he's always brooding always <laughs> um yeah no i'm just not i'm not emotional enough to be a rick character 
Um, I'm more calculating. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more, I'm only going to do something if, if there's a certain amount of payoff involved. Yeah. Well, and, and to be fair, when you're, when you're in those types of situations, you know, you, you need things like that. You know, you need those kind of thought process. I guess he had a really good little community going, dude. Mm -hmm. He was doing great until those damn kids got involved. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Do you, do you think, uh, what, what if you were, this is hard because I don't think you would ever get involved in this situation. But like, <laughs> yeah. but like the I know Walking Dead visited this for a little bit where they came across like a community of cannibals. Like they were a working oh, yeah. community, but they yeah. just slaughtered humans and ate them and uh-huh. stuff like that. Like, do you do you think things like that would actually pop up? Do you oh, think there'd actually be people yes. who would? You think I so? think there's shit like that already, and the, the world isn't even ending. So yeah, absolutely. When the world, fuck yeah, people are gonna eat people. <sighs> um, I wouldn't kick it with them. I'm not down with that. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'm not down with that. <laughs> um, I mean, it's kind of hard to kick it with people when everybody's <sighs> potentially food. Well, I mean, even if, they, even if they were cool with me, I wouldn't even be like their leader. But that, but that's what I mean, um, though. Even if they're cool with you, even if they're around for five years and they're cool with you for the first three, you're, you're still potentially food. <laughs> if shit hits the fan, it's like, well, we like everybody, but we like Matthew the least. <laughs> so here's the deal, Okay. Those guys were, like, choosing to be cannibals. I understand the world was ending. Right. But everyone else that the world was still ending for uh-huh. was figuring it out without eating people. Right. Okay, these guys were, like, in the middle of a forest with, like, wild creatures and plants, on, and they were choosing to eat people. Right. I'm not down with that. Now, if we're on a fucking boat, Adam, Yeah. all right, let me just tell you in case you ever get on a boat with me. <laughs> all right, after, like, day four, yeah. I don't even have to be that hungry. After, like, day four... I'm gonna eat your ass. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fucking munch you. I don't even care. It's like the fucking synopsis of a <laughs> horror movie. A bunch of people on a boat, and there's just one guy there after four days, like, that's me. All right, I'm gonna start fucking eating all of you. Uh huh. I'm looking. Like, day two, I'm, I told you I'm calculating. Like, mm-hmm. Day two, I'm gonna start figuring out which one it's gonna be. And by day four, if circumstances haven't changed, you're you getting munched, people. bro. You're getting munched. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Interesting. <laughs> but now if there were like fish that uh-huh. were jumping out of the water into the boat, I'm going to eat the fish. Right. All right. Like we're cool. Uh-huh. But yeah, if we're on a desert island, homie, and there ain't shit, I get hungry pretty quick. I have a fast metabolism, dude. Duly noted if I'm ever on a boat or an island with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Like everybody, Matthew's secretly a cannibal. <laughs> you need to watch out for that guy. <laughs> it goes back to the th- I think we're all cannibals. I just think that, you know, most of the time we don't partake in it. I think I think if it came down now, because I'm not saying that I wouldn't partake in eating people. Also, if it came not. down to it, of course it, you're not saying that. I'm just saying it probably <laughs> would it be after just four days not on a boat, or yeah, it'd probably take me take me significantly longer. You gotta than be calculate. You gotta be mathematical about it, man. Because mm-hmm. after four days, you're gonna start getting weak. Start mm-hmm. getting really weak, dude. And you got to have that little bit of oomph left in you. Right. Because it's, it's not exactly super easy to just munch someone. Right. Well, like, right. It takes a little bit it's of willpower. It's a process. It takes some willpower. Uh-huh. So you got to have enough energy left to get through that. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean. You never the... come back from it. Okay. Oh, Let's no. say, once you eat someone, you, there's no going back. But there's also a disease that, a pretty bad disease that you get from eating people. I've heard that it's I not it's, good to eat people. Yeah, I think it, it's called like coro or something like that. It's like a try again. It's, it's like called coro or something like that. It's like mm. K O R O. I I might be wrong about that, but but it's like it makes it gives you like the shakes. It makes you grind your teeth. It gives you crazy fevers. Um, like I've heard things about that. Like when people do eat human meat there's been like scientists who have even tried it yeah, yeah like yeah. you know just as an experiment uh-huh. um i've heard it's super duper repulsive like the, really? mo- the most repulsive thing you can put in your- like your brain almost knows and it's it's like you are mechanically created to not enjoy it really it's weird yeah interesting i've also heard things on a on a kind of a little separate note that like you see people stab each other in the movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that and, like, recreations, and it looks like, oh, they just poke them, like, seven times. No big deal. Oh, no, right? I've heard about So that, I've heard that, yeah. like, the actual act of truly, like, stabbing a human being, stabbing mm-hmm. through flesh, is incredibly difficult. Yeah. Like, as you're doing it or as you're going – thrusting is fine, but once you actually get there, you really almost have to train yourself to keep going. 
and the amount of mess and fluid that is involved, a lot of people underestimate. Well, and I heard too, and you actually might be the one who told me this, that that's also why knives have the straps on it. Because when you go to pull the knife out, a lot of the times because of the blood or the juices, it's slippery. It's slippery yeah, they'll or have gets... a loop that your hand will go mm-hmm. in. They also have certain cuts in the blade that are called blood spills. Right. Um, and it's a true thing. And even when you like butcher animals, it doesn't have to be for murdering. Right. right. But if you have a knife that's used for butchering animals, mm-hmm. um, it'll have blood. It'll have a thicker blood spill. Oh, yeah. And that keeps the, the fluid going along the blade and down instead of coming down your hand, there which was, is very slippery. There was a time I was uh, with Vince, actually. And uh, Vince Vince raises livestock, you guys, for eggs and food. He's very into that stuff. And it's very He would survive. Very, yeah. Uh, if there's ever oh, yeah. an end of the world. He's far enough away. He's got a little farm. He'd survive. Yeah, and he's he's very good at that kind of stuff. And I remember I went over to his house, and I had never like slaughtered an animal before for like eating. So we went over oh, there. I've to, actually done that. It's yeah. a hell of an experience. Oh yeah. So we we went over there to, to uh, slaughter a chicken, and then we were gonna cook it and eat it all on the same night. It was actually funny. The pro- whole process took two hours from when it was alive to when we were eating it. it was oh actually, yeah. It's pretty. People quick. don't realize. People are like, oh, you could never do that. No, you could literally raise livestock. Yeah, and yeah. Cook yeah. It the same day but going off of your knife conversation the way that we did it was just by uh quickly slitting the throat and letting it bleed out uh, if you're discretion advised by the way a little you know a little graphic a circle of life there. circle it's of not, life yeah no one is torturing any animals in this they were literally humanely butchering yes. it so yes. that they could clean it and eat it yes but you don't realize you know and and vince had this you know j- giant you know knife that was obviously meant for this but you don't realize how actually tough even like a chicken skin is to like oh, yeah. get through it like um, I, people don't understand it it looks so easy on, on tv yeah it's, it's not no it doesn't matter how sharp your knife is also it's like sometimes it, it just takes some work I uh, mm-hmm. I had a little experience um butchering ducks back in the day mm-hmm. um kind of a similar thing and it was funny because before I did it, my mom grew up on a farm. Right. So I was like an older teenager when, when I had my, my butchering experience. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I asked her, you know, what's, what's the best way to do this? And um, she said that on the farm when she was growing up, her dad had ducks. Uh-huh. And they would literally just walk up along the ducks and while they were eating or pooping or whatever, totally naturally. And they would grab their neck and flick their arm. Mm-hmm. Pretty pretty hard. And it would just snap their neck instantly, and they would be done. Uh-huh. And the duck never saw it coming. It took two seconds. The last thing it ever knew, it was eating some fucking berries, and then it just died. Right. right. So super humane way to just take them out quickly. Um, the person who I was living with at the time who had the ducks was not willing to do it that way. Uh-huh. And it became a whole fiasco of trying to butcher the ducks. Uh, so my whole point in all this is people who think it's so easy to raise livestock, it's very easy to raise them, and you get a lot of joy and love out of mm-hmm. them. But even in a survival scenario, when right. you go out into the forest and you're looking for that deer or whatever, when you finally find it, it's not as easy as you think to actually take its life, dude. No. For a lot of people, I'm sure there's some people who can just be like, boom, you're done. Right. But for a lot of us, what I would call regular folk who live in the city and mm-hmm. live like me and you do, I don't know that we would even get the deer killed to even have a chance to eat it. Yes. Well, so I'm somebody where it's like, the the way that I'm able to always go there because I'm somebody who like I don't I don't like taking life or whatnot. I remember when I was younger and my parents you know took me fishing for the first time and I caught and killed a fish. I I felt so fucking horrible about it because yeah. I wasn't eating the fish. I wasn't doing. It was literally just like okay, you caught it, throw it back now. It's, it's like well, it's fucking dead, you know. Yeah. But I I felt bad about it, and. I'm somebody who also hates birds. I fucking hate them. Adam you know? does hate birds. But I'm also not going to just, you know, if I see a bird, you know, a fucking duck walking by, I'm not going to be like, ooh, I want to go over there and kill that bird. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So but the way that it always helps me to justify it in my head is just just what you said earlier, the circle of life. You know, when I went over to Vince's yeah. house and killed this chicken, it was like, well, this chicken's going to feed me. 
you know, th this chicken is where this Absolutely. chicken lived and now it's going to feed me. And sure enough, like afterwards, it was very weird to eat something that you knew was just alive two years ago. But I, I didn't feel bad about it because it wasn't like I just slaughtered it for fun. You know, as long as there's, there's always purpose yes. to it. Yeah, that's I mean, that's what animals are there for, man. Mm -hmm. So survival situation. What's the best uh, weapon to have with you? You're a gun guy, you're a bow guy, you're a sword, knife, axe. Let's think about this. Slingshot. So, a gun would probably benefit you the most. However, there's the question of bullets and also the weight of bullets, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't really carry, a, even if you have a lot of ammo, you can't really carry around a lot of ammo because you have the weight of it to think about. And it's loud. And, the, and it's loud. And then we're not just talking zombies here either. No, 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 That's no. just a in general. Situation, just in general. But in any situation. So, yeah. and then you have to think, well, eventually you're going to run out of bullets, you know, and your gun's not going to help you at that point. So, you'd probably want like a melee weapon of some sort. Um What's Adam's weapon? What do you don first day of the crisis? I as somebody who's never really thought thought about it like that in depth i think an axe an axe yeah it's something You're an axe guy i think it's something that it's it could be lightweight you can carry it around with you it can be smaller or a little bigger it, it's not too intrusive and it's also double axe is not only a weapon but also as a tool okay right okay i could fuck with it an yeah. axe huh i think an axe is what i would go with what about you interesting i would want something pokey I'm so a like poker. a spear like a spear. If we're talking pure weaponry here, uh -huh. um, back to again, I'm not the best fighter. Right. So I want to have distance, uh -huh. and I don't want to have to slash or do a lot of exerting effort because um, I'm clumsy. So I just want to fucking poke at you and just poke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like, poking would... from a distance. Um, I'm terrible at aiming, and I'm shaky because I have Tourette's. So okay. I don't want a gun. I don't want a bow and arrow. Right. I don't want any of that. Because uh, it's useless for me. I won't hit shit. <laughs> so I think, honestly, um, have you ever seen, like, so an optimum case thing? Uh -huh. Have you ever seen, like, those survival spears? So they're, like, no. it'd be, like, this six-foot-tall, like, carbon fiber spear, okay? And, and the tip of the spear is, like, part shovel, part saw, part spoon Ugh. like it's like 30 different fucking things in one oh, tip. On, on each side on right? each side and then okay, like yeah, from I know the handle shit about. will like come out from the handle and the other it's like okay. a gigantic swiss army knife okay right that's optimum case right if i have to make something i think i'm literally just gonna like tie a kitchen knife to a broom handle or something like day one if i'm watching tv and i see the news uh -huh. I, well, there's not a lot to choose from in this house. See, so you'd have to go find a long kitchen knife. See, and that's another thing with carrying an axe because of, because of an axe being so non-intrusive of a weapon as far as carrying it around. I'm talking about like like something a little bigger than a hatchet. I'm not talking about like a spear axe. Oh, you're talking like a tomahawk kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah, something one -handed like that. Axe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. So, so something I not thought you too... were going to be like a lumberjack. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, maybe, totally maybe somewhere in between if I, if I could manage it, but but usually just like a hatchet or something, right? I feel like you're going to get fucked up if you try to bring a hatchet to a fight. Well, I mean, I guess it depends what the other person has. If True. I'm fighting you that has a spear, well, I just have to get around you and fucking get that fucking axe I can poke you from spear. three feet away. Oh, I'm fast. We'll fucking see. I'm pretty pokey, dude. Slimy. me. <laughs> I could fucking throw an axe, though. I could throw a spear. Could you? With a fuck? Can you throw an axe? When's the last time you threw Accur an axe at Adam? Uh, accurately, could you? Well, I could throw an axe I feel axe like a you. spear would be a lot harder to throw accurately than a. One of us would have would. to hit something, because after we both throw our weapons, now we're just fist fighting. <laughs> well, that's so... true. <laughs> Until one of us can get to the other one, right? <laughs> In a battle royale situation. No, I guess optimally, <laughs> if, if, you're, if we're being like serious about it, a pistol is probably the best thing for any person. Yeah. So a, small, I mean, a small sidearm of some kind. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely, definitely like... In the first throws of it, like, find yourself a gun, you know? Yeah. Oh, dude, you can go years. There's enough bullets for years. Yeah, absolutely. But 
in the situation where you didn't have one an axe and going back on the axe being less intrusive you could also then carry around like a, a kitchen knife or something like a long you know knife that you're able to bring well, with you also see conveniently i happen to actually be a collector of knives that's right so i have quite the array in my room of different um melee weapons to choose from so would you br- so. would you like do you have like a few select few you'd bring with you, or you i have one all that's my that? favorite okay i have one that's my favorite yes okay he would be with me all the time he's big enough to go like on your ankle kind of thing oh, and okay. then i do have one that's a main uh it's a kukri it's What's like that? A, so it's a type of um machete okay. um, but it's the type that is where your hand is on the handle it's very thin coming out of the handle and uh-huh. then it gets big and wide towards the end it's more for chopping i see um Yes, so that that's one of my favorites. I probably don him day one. Okay. Be the one. Do you think something like and this kind of goes back to me thinking about Walking Dead because I know there's a character on there that carries around like a fucking katana. Oh, Michonne. Yeah, do you, Michonne. So do she's you, a beast. So do you think having a weapon like that would would be beneficial, or do you think that would be pointless? I think the only reason it's beneficial for her is because of zombies, right? No, is because she has an incredible amount of training with it. Gotcha. So if you put her weapon in anyone else's hand, they're going to fucking get killed. Gotcha. You have to, like, she's particularly martial artsy. She, like, taught herself how to be disciplined with it and how to be stealthy. And gotcha. That's her character. Her She went through trifles, and she made herself strong. Okay. And, like, disciplined. Right. Um, and she's kind of a loner, too. So she's all about being quiet. She's a ninja. She's right. literally a fucking ninja, bro. <laughs> right. So... For anyone else, nah, you'd get fucked up if you had a katana. That's a stupid weapon. Right, but for her, it's like... For her, she's a beast. She's a fucking beast, yeah. But she still gets shot. She's been shot a couple times. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's just something you're not going to be able to avoid. Honestly, if we were, like, living here... And a post po- an apocalyptic situation happened, you uh-huh. know, the first thing I would honestly try to do is I could go, okay, time to start making the trek over to Vince's house over by the mountains. Oh, that's a long trek. Oh, that's a long trek. That's but a that, long trek. That would track. probably be my first, like, decision of, like, okay, if I, I have to move, I'm you'd going to go there. You'd get killed on the 202. There. There's no way you'd make it down the highway. Oh, well, no, you'd have to take an extreme fucking scenic route. But that would be, like, my first, like— It would take you days. Where else am I going to go? What else am I going to do? I guess that's true. That's your life now. Yeah, your life that's is just, just living it. every day. It's just making decisions. So, okay, well, so, <laughs> I'm going to spend my time doing this. Just for the sake of it, let's take it out of post-apocalyptic for a minute. Okay. Let's say that it's just the normal world we live in, okay. all right? But all the power went out. Okay. Okay, and the power's never coming back. Okay. Never. All right. This just got a little more extreme. I'm building it in my head as I'm saying it. Okay. Uh, this was going to start as, just for you guys to understand how my head works. <laughs> Originally, when I opened my mouth, this was going to be, if you were on an island, what tool would you want? Uh-huh. Okay. And it turned into, all the fucking power is gone. <laughs> it's never going to come back. Okay. But no one's, like, invading right. or anything. Okay. It's just electricity is no longer exists. No longer a It doesn't thing. exist anymore. Gotcha. Um. What's your tool? What tool do you go for first? What's like, I need this. Not weapon, just tool. Ooh, if all the electricity went out. And it's never coming back. And it's never coming back. Well, I think the the first thing you'd have to find is a weapon. I think especially when you live in suburbia. Because other people are going to be like, oh, the power's out. That means, you know, and everybody else is going to also be panicking, right? Assuming, oh, end of times, end of the world, whatever it is. So you're going to have people who are going to start going door to door to houses in suburbia looking for whatever they want, looking for places to squat, whatever it is. So the first thing you would need is a weapon. So, I mean, I think that would be the first tool I find, which I'm fucked because I don't really have any fucking weapons. I'm not going to go very (laughs) But I mean, so I guess that's why the first thing I would probably do is going back to being, you know, laying low and just scavenging is just start leaving and just start going out. So I guess the first tool I would grab because of that is maybe a kitchen knife and a flashlight. Flashlight's a good one. Yeah. Flashlight's a good one. Um, so the first thing that popped into my head mm-hmm. that's like, Matthew, you better go grab that right now. Um, nail clippers. Really? Yeah. So I got to have nail clippers. And here's the reason. It's just particularly me, I have to have them. So 
my teeth are kind of fucked up. Uh-huh. And you know how most people can like chew their nails with like their dog tooth or whatever, uh-huh. like that, their canine, excuse me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so my teeth are kind of crooked and they don't line up uh-huh. on the left side. So I can't do it on the left, so I have to do it on the right. Except I chipped that tooth a few years ago. So now it doesn't really clench onto my nails. I can't uh-huh. chew my nails, guys, is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's not that I don't like to, it's the anatomy of my body physically cannot chew my own nails. It's really a burden. So I have to have fucking nail clippers. So, but why would why would your first mode of instinct be like, oh, how am I going to be able to clip my nails though? Because this? it's a nuisance, Adam. My nails grow really fast. It's a thing I deal with like every two days. Uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't count that though as like a tool to bring because that's something so small that can just fit in a pocket. Amen. All the you more know? reason to bring it. Is that all you would bring? It's the first thing. The first I would thing you go would for. grab. I would also grab can opener. Okay. Because I'm smart, um, and I know that I'm not going to be fucking hunting uh-huh. because I'm not a hunter. That's, so that's a good one. A can opener. I'm going to be scavenging, so I need a can opener. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Both of those things would be in my pockets. Fuck a flashlight. I don't need a flashlight. I need a lighter. Okay. I grab a lighter off the table and hope there's fluid in it. Okay. Even if there's not fluid, I'd still take it. Uh huh. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm envisioning the house as I'm running through the house. So I ran to my room. I grab that, grab that. I got the lighter. Uh, probably the last thing I'm going to really think about is shoes. I'm okay. like, what's the pair of shoes that I have with the thickest sole? What's Touché. The, what's the most rubbery shoe that I have? Probably going to put those on with like two pairs of socks, and mm-hmm. I'm fucking out. I'm dipping after that. Okay. So hopefully I grabbed everything I needed in that. <laughs> I got nail clippers. I got a lighter. What was the other thing I grabbed? Can opener. Can opener. I think the can opener is smart. So I think I'd probably grab like a kitchen knife, a flashlight, and a can opener, assuming I had to just pack light. And then just the usual stuff you said, like pick the right shoes, put on a few pairs of socks, a hoodie, you know. Oh, you know the other thing? Oh, fuck. And I would literally have to go back. Even if I was running down the street, I'd have to turn around and go back. What? Um, The case for my glasses. The hard case oh, that my glasses go yes. in. That is a necessity. Yes. Because if my glasses get broken, I'm super fucked. That's true. So, I didn't even think about that. But if yeah. they're not on your face, they're in your case, folks. Ooh. Yep. So you people yep. out there with glasses, just make sure you always have that case nearby. Dude. <laughs> in case shit hits the fan. If your glasses get broken, you're doomed. I could do nothing. Do you think most millennials would be able to survive a situation of like what you said, all the electricity turning off, it's not turning back on. Okay, so I think that a typical millennial would be very confident okay. in saying that they could survive. Okay. Because they've played so many games right. where you survive, right? Except the only thing about a game is that they're built to be fun. Right. Okay, so like, Time goes by very quickly in games. Uh So for an example, like a game where you would build a company, okay? Everyone can be a successful millionaire CEO in a tycoon builder game because you can speed up time and just let the money come in and then build more stuff, right? Right. So everyone can survive in a video game because you're not actually cold or hungry. You can let your character get down to 12% health Mm -hmm. and just grind him into the ground and bring him back to the city and get his health back real quick, right? (laughs) Right. you can't do that in real life. Right. You only get one playthrough. You also can't like go so far into the forest, die, and then restart and be like, okay, I don't take that path. Like, <laughs> yeah. You get one fucking shot in real life. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's necessarily because they are millennials. I think just any humans throughout history, eight out of 10, maybe nine out of 10 are goners. That makes sense. They just are, just statistically. Mm-hmm. Well, and it just comes down to a lot of millennials lacking – a lot of people in general lacking common knowledge about certain things, right? So you would have people like you, I, or even Justin who understands, oh, we can go days without food and be fine, right? Right. But you're going to have other people who are going to be freaking out like, oh my gosh, I haven't eaten in a day. I'm going to fucking die, 
you know, right. and panic's going to set in. The most the most important thing during those situations is always remain calm. That's what they say. Always remain calm. That's what they say. I mean, that's the only way you can think clearly, right? That's the people who panic, who don't grab it, who forget the nail clippers. They forget whatever it Dude, else is that they need. If I forgot need. my nail clippers, I'd be so fucked, bro. <laughs> it's just, it's a really, it's like a, a burden in my life. I have to have nail clippers. See, I am actually somebody who bites my nails a lot, religiously. I think most and people are. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I bite mine really bad, man. But anyways, but I would be somebody where after a, a in an apocalyptic like the one that you described happen, I would actually want my nails to grow because I feel like I could use my nails as tools for anything down the line. Whereas, like, even right now, sometimes trying to fucking, like, do shit or open things is harder because I don't have nails, like, grasp on to corner things Yeah, let your nails or... grow out an inch and Ugh. tell me it's not the worst fucking thing ever. Oh, but I can bite my nails down. Oh, I don't need the nail terrible. clippers. terrible. <laughs> I just physically can't do it. <laughs> and, like, you know, sharpen um, them with my teeth. You know what we've forgotten? This what? whole time that's going to end up killing us in the end. Um, we didn't bring any kind of medicine. Ooh. So someone's going to get a fever or an infection, and they're going to be dead. And it's not going to matter how long your nails are. You know what? When I think about it, I don't actually think we have any medicine in this house. <laughs> we don't really do medicine. No, guys. aside from like Advil or Tylenol. Justin's actually sick right now. And he's miserable because there's no yeah, medicine. Yeah, there's no medicine. Because <laughs> we're always like, you're, we're just gonna take giant bags of Moringa with us. Like, this is my medicine. Honestly, not it bad idea. It sounds like right? a joke. Okay, you think he's bullshitting, guys? But if you had a pound of Moringa powder, you're set. You are gonna outlive everybody. Yes. Because you're gonna have energy. You're gonna be full. Mm -hmm. um, don't eat it every day because you'll fuck your kidneys up because yeah. there's actually too much nutrients in it. Yeah. But if you had like. Four tablespoons of moringa powder every two days. Yeah, you'd, you'd get skinny as fuck, but you would be fine. You you'd have all survive. the you have all the nutrients yep. you need. You're right. Moringa would probably be a really smart thing to. It's bring. one of the best things you could possibly bring. Yeah, actually. yeah. yeah. Ooh, I like that's that. funny. It started as a joke. Yeah, but it's it's true though. It's probably the best thing to bring. You'll last. You will last for sure. <laughs> but oh, so let's 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 do another scenario. Here. I actually I really like your scenario about all electricity just turning off and not turning okay. back on. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. One. So if you had the choice to bring any any species of animal, you have a pet that can join oh, like you a, like in a survival this. companion. Yeah, like a survival companion. So it's just you and this animal. What is the animal? Ooh. Tough questions. So, well, no, not really. I'm just immediately torn between two different answers. Okay. So there's either the strategy, in my opinion, of a food animal. Okay. So an animal that can produce food or become food if the shit gets, you know, bad enough. Or what I think I would really go for, honestly, is some kind of pack animal. Something okay. that could carry weight. Okay. Because like anyone who's ever played survival video games, mm -hmm. you know, and I know I just got done explaining how it's a terrible example, but let's right. use that as an example now. <laughs> um, so in survival video games, it's never the ammo, right? It's never the weapons. It's mm -hmm. never the food or the water or the sleep. It's the storage space. True. It's your fucking inventory can't hold enough stuff, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to like leave materials behind and so things that you could use. You have to leave them behind. Or keep them somewhere where you can stash them and go back to them later. I want to be mobile. Survival, right. in my opinion, it's all about staying mobile. Uh -huh. So I would want... So, and I guess as I said those words, the thought popped in my head, like, you could just have a car. But I guess True. assuming that there's not fuel or vehicles, uh -huh. I would want some kind of pack animal. Well, so the only an thing... Ox. Like an ox? Like I'd a mule? A fucking mule ox. or an ox. So... Although I I agree that that would be something helpful to have, at first I would want the like something that's not going to make noise, something that's not going because like a mule is hard to hide, right? If you're in a situation where you have to hide really quick from some bandits or something, you're not going to be able to really shush a mule or be able to hide a mule, right? Or an ox, as you were saying. True. So like, I feel like that's actually, and if anything, you're more desirable now because look at all that fucking big old giant slab of spam. That's you know what animal I would you. want, Adam? What? Here we go. I just. I want a fucking horse. Okay, I want an animal fair. that can carry shit, but it can also carry me. 
I okay. could just ride my fucking horse. There you go. Why was that not my first I don't know. <laughs> and we live in the Southwest. We're in Cowboy Town, USA. We really are. Duh. The best companion you could ever have is a fucking horse, That's dude. true. You're right. That is true. And they're even kind of, like, smart. Mm-hmm. So, well, they're not kind of smart. They're very smart. Yeah. So they can actually even, like, give you affection, like a dog or something. You know, you could pet true. a horse. and kind of hard to cuddle with it i guess but right you could like let it lay down and then lay down next to it uh-huh i used to work at stables actually i worked at like two different stables when i was younger um horses are really they have personality like so much so that they will actually fight with each other like there will be certain horses who socially do not like other horses mm-hmm. like it has nothing to do with like oh you're trying to mate with my mate or you're trying to right. eat my food or they just say fuck you I just don't like your face right and they will fight with other horses it's hilarious I will have to say within the past five years especially living with Justin who loves animals at one point Justin and I lived in an apartment that had like 30 animals right, right. all like reptiles and stuff that wasn't very intrusive but right. we had 30 of them and I always knew that things like dogs and cats had, you know, very defined personalities, right? Mm -hmm. You could tell one dog from the other, even if they were the same breed, looked exactly the same, right? So, and I was actually pleasantly surprised when I found that out in these, like, little lizards also. Yeah. These, like, you know, we had a bearded dragon. We had a Chinese water dragon. We had you these love little the bearded frogs. Dragon. I really Tina did. Tina was your favorite, bro. She really was. And the reason why she was my favorite is because this fucking lizard had so much personality. She was a and dragon. Was, Excuse me. She was a she dragon. She was not a lizard. She was a fucking dragon. Sure, she was a dragon. And she has so much fucking personality. And I've just become so amazed over the years of just, and I've had a couple snakes and just the personality differences in these like animals that you think wouldn't be able to develop personality at all. So would you ever bring a a dragon or a snake as your companion? I think I would bring a dog. A dog? I I think a dog. Super cliche that it is man's best friend. Well, man's best friend, I think especially because I plan on being by myself for so long, I do think you need a something that's going to be more of a social companion simply oh see i'm finding people so i'm good with that see exactly whereas like me i feel like i need something to be more social with to keep my mind sane i already i already know what it's like to live in the world with all the uh amenities that we have now and be stuck in an apartment for three years with hardly going out and how that affects you if i'm gonna be by myself i want a dog i think a dog is the perfect pet to do that with yeah um for sure. Well, and plus, you can definitely train them to be quiet at times when they need to be quiet. Like a big they dog? Can, yeah, like a medium-sized dog, like a like a rich, like maybe not a retriever, but like that kind of size. Okay. You know, German Shepherd things German like Shepherd, that. That's a big yeah. dog. German Shepherd's bigger. That's a big dog. Okay, so more like retriever size then, or somewhere maybe in between. Okay. But okay. Uh, like not something like our English bulldog. You know, I wouldn't be dragging anything that size with. We had me. a purebred German Shepherd. Oh, growing really? up, whose name was Sir Blitzkrieg of of Wainwright or something like that. <laughs> he was actually knighted. He was literally knighted, and he was a dog. Uh, he was thousands of dollars. He was very expensive. He was a purebred. How did this dog get um, knighted? What did it do? It save a child from a train? It was from England. Like, it literally, I don't know. My dad fucking found this dog, dude, and <laughs> went just... and, 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 I don't know. We had this dog, and it was... No exaggeration. It was 150, 160 pounds. Wow. Uh, four, four and a half feet tall, just standing. And oh, if it wow. stood up on two legs, it was seven feet tall. It was, this dog was huge. Wow. Huge, huge, huge. Um, he was a badass. He was a fucking badass. Smart. The smartest dog we've ever had, dude. You, he, you could just, you could literally say a sentence to this dog, and he would look at you, and he would do whatever the sentence was. Interesting. Fucking dog See, dogs are understood smart, English. You know, when you're in, so that's why when you're in like a post-apocalyptic situation, you want something that's not only going to be like unconditionally loyal to you, but something that you can train to do it as you want to do something that's going to protect you if it needs protecting. That's, you would want that. You, know? you would want that dog. Yeah, that def- dog would fuck someone up, dude. Dog would fuck somebody up. He's a big up. baby though, too. He's a huge baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they always are. They always are. They always are. But I feel like when you're in a situation where that dog has nothing but you. That dog's going to be very protective over you. Yeah. You know? 
And uh, sure. so, yeah, I think definitely a dog is what I would bring with me. And I think a dog's probably the smarter one to bring also. But a horse is also really smart. Yeah. Anybody out dust. there who's like, You and your I dog bring... will be walking. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're right. We would be walking. But anybody out there who's like, I'd bring my cat with me. Shut the fuck up. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Your cat would eat you. Yeah. Your cat don't give a damn. Uh, your cat wouldn't eat you. You'd walk outside and your cat would be like, later. <laughs> See ya. Can you imagine, Belisha? If, oh, if the world ended, no, she, that cat. She disowned you so quickly. She'd be like, peace out, dude. You don't have food anymore. <laughs> it's like, yeah. My cat only loves me when I give her things. She doesn't actually love me. There's no way. I mean, I am curious out there, though. Anybody listening to this podcast, if you found yourself in a situation where you all living where you do now with all the amenities you have now and all the electricity was shut off, you couldn't use a car, the electricity wasn't turning back on, what animal would you bring and what would be the first tools that you bring? And what would you do? Tell us your story. Would you bring nail know. clippers? Would you bring nail clippers? <laughs> I would. <laughs> I will have two pairs of nail clippers. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go raid the Sally Beauty Supply. That's the first place I'm going because nobody's yeah. going there. Ooh, that's a that's another good question. As far as like, yeah. would would your first thing be to get like go someplace to gather supplies, or would you just like lay low? Fuck no, I get out. I would get too. the hell out. I would too, because uh-huh. everybody's yeah. doing that. Right? Everyone's doing that. No, you couldn't do that. I might raid some houses. Like if I find some abandoned houses, I'd be that guy. Like, all right, what's going on in here? Anybody here? No. Okay. What's, what do you got in your cupboards? No, I'd probably just keep walking. I feel yeah. like where you die is in the house. Yeah, well, that's, true. The, that's the I guess don't enclose yourself in walls right I just wouldn't go into any situations that had bad statistics of death touche at least not at first <laughs> alright guys um, I think that oh, brings no, that the hour? I think that's the hour oh my goodness there we are well we survived this podcast we survived this podcast I think we actually got to most of the topics this time oh nope missed that one but you know here we are anyways thank you so much for listening guys we always appreciate it um just if you if you hung out till the end of this podcast, just so you know, we have some big things coming, uh, some things we're working on, uh, ways to make this podcast a little more easily accessible to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. Exciting so, things, guys. Look out for some exciting things coming up. Look it out for it. So uh, keep those things in mind. And thank you so much for listening. Uh, remember, you can check us out on all the social media platforms. We also still have a GoFundMe, www.gofundme.com forward slash hardly millennial. We appreciate anything anyone can donate. And as always, guys, thank you for listening. And Matthew, do you have any final words? Can't wait to see you again tomorrow, guys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, guys, have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Bye.